Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where every week I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. With the channel now having exceeded 200 subscribers and about to be featured in the Best Teaching Resources newsletter for January, I thought what better way to celebrate than by exploring the science of fireworks. Let's check it out. The demonstrations this week involve using potentially harmful materials, so should not be performed without an adult and without safety equipment. Have you ever been at a fireworks display and wondered how they get fireworks of so many different colours? Fireworks were first documented around the 7th century CE in China, and for around 1,200 years, fireworks were only white or orange, until around the 1830s when Italians realised that if you burn different metal salts, you will get different colours. So this week, that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be burning different metal salts to see what colours we get from them. So in front of me, I have four different metal salts I'm going to be testing. I've got sodium chloride, which is better known to us as salt. I have strontium chloride. I have boric acid. And I have copper sulphate. I have also colour coded each of these materials to correspond with the colour on different bamboo sticks so that I know which bamboo stick has which material on it. So I'm using green for sodium chloride, purple for strontium chloride, yellow for boric acid and blue for copper sulphate. I'm going to be using three bamboo sticks for each different type of material just so I've got a backup in case one doesn't work. I've already separated my different materials into smaller bags and I'm going to start with the sodium chloride, better known to us as salt. I'm going to take one of the bamboo sticks and put some white glue on the last inch of the bamboo stick at the pointy end and then I'm going to dip that into the small bag containing salt, spin it around and then set it back out on the tin foil so I can leave it to dry and then I'm going to do the same with the other two salt bamboo sticks. Now I'm going to do the same with the strontium chloride. Now I'm going to move on to the boric acid. And to finish with, I'm going to move on and prepare my copper sulphate skewers. And now that they're all prepared, I'm going to leave them for 30 minutes to make sure the glue is dry before I test them. Now that these have had half an hour to dry, it is time to go outside and test them. You'll notice that the sodium chloride, strontium chloride and boric acid all look the same when they've been glued onto the bamboo sticks and that is why I've used the colour coding so I can tell which one is which. These should only be tested outdoors because the chemicals given off when these materials are burned can be potentially harmful when breathed in. I also have a jug of water outside with me as a safety precaution just in case anything goes wrong with the flames. I'm going to use a separate tea light for each type of material and I'm going to go in the same order I prepared them in, so I will be starting with the sodium chloride. First I'm going to light the tea light and look at the colour of the flame. It is yellow and orange towards the top, but it's got a wee bit of blue down near the wick. Now I'm going to hold in a bamboo skewer with sodium chloride on it and watch what happens.
Now with a fresh tea light, I'm going to hold in a skewer of strontium chloride and watch what happens. Now with a third tea light, I'm going to hold in a skewer of boric acid and watch what happens. And to finish with on my fourth tea light, I'm going to hold in a skewer of copper sulphate and watch what happens. That wasn't the easiest outdoor test. It was quite windy and the flames were burning out quickly when I was holding the different materials over the top, but we were still able to see the results of burning these different metal salts. I started with the sodium chloride, more commonly known as salt, and you'll have noticed that when I held that in, we got a brighter yellow colour from the flame. Then I'd moved on to the strontium chloride. When I held that one into the flame, we got a very deep, rich red colour. Following that, I tested the boric acid, where we got a really vibrant green. And I finished with the copper sulphate, where we got more of a bluey green colour from the flame. The reason we get different colours from burning these different materials is because of the metals contained within these metal salts. Sodium, strontium and copper are all used in fireworks in a different form than I've got them here to produce yellow, red and blue fireworks respectively. Sodium is also burned in street lamps in a vaporised form, which is why they've got that yellow-orange glow to them. Boric acid is derived from the metalloid boron. Now, boron and boric acid are not used in fireworks. However, fire jugglers do use boric acid to produce a green flame in their fire juggling act. So now the next time you're at a fireworks display, you can amaze friends and family by being able to tell them what different metals are being burned in the different fireworks. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've put a link in the description to the Best Teaching Resources website so teachers out there can go on and subscribe to the newsletter to stay up to date on the best teaching resources out there. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring the science of fireworks.